Hi, welcome to Power to the Flower. Thanks for joining me here today. It is finally and officially spring. It's April 4th, and so that means that it's time to get our hands on some beautiful plants and get this rose patio up and running. So today's video is going to be setting up the patio and then planting the wash bin container. All right, so this is going to be the rose patio, and let me uh, take you on a little tour. So we have a fire pit right here, and we always have a lot of people over, so I always wanna have six chairs out. Um, and we used to have a bed in the ground right here, but people were always tripping over the edge of it. So we bricked it over and now we're gonna be using containers. So I had last year, I'll put a picture up, beautiful white containers from Tractor Supply. And unfortunately, soon after purchasing them, I came to find out that they are no longer available. In the end, I landed on Pottery Barn's drinks containers, which is why they have a bottle opener here. They're a good size. I'll put the dimensions on the screen. Unfortunately, for the price you pay, you would have thought that they would have had a drain hole, but they don't. So I'm gonna be drilling those in today. I like the stands. The point of the wash bin container is that when you're sitting at the fireplace on the patio, I want you to be mesmerized by the flowers and kind of look over the flowers to the back and not focus on our dead, dead grass. Yes, I know that this is here. It's like a weed patch. Unfortunately, it's a huge project. It's one of those DIY projects that you get depressed before you even start because when you think about it, you're so, so sad. This is a huge irrigation mess. And so we need to sort it out. It leads from one issue to another. And so at the moment we're just living with it. And sometimes that's what we have to do, right? So in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is try and just mesmerize people with plants. So we need to open the rest of the wash bins and set them up around the patio. Over here I have a purple princess flower, which grows very large. It can be, I think, up to 10 feet tall and wide. Also an easy one for pruning. This plant was located in a, the landscape next to the maple tree. Didn't do very well over there, so I decided to bring it down to the patio. I cut it back. It's pushing new growth. It's getting some life back in it. So I'm excited to see how this does. I think potentially it could be a beautiful kind of piece right here that will counter the lemon tree on the other side. So when you enter the patio, I want people to feel enclosed in roses. And I already know I don't have enough, but that's okay. I have two roll dolls right here. These are peonies, which I'm trying out this year for the first time. They're absolutely gorgeous, but I know they're gonna be done by June. So this is gonna have to change. Um, Somehow we're gonna have the wash bins. Then we're going to have probably the wash bins here. We have our amazing Strawberry Hill Climber, which will take over this entire area. And then I have three more. So this is the David Austin Cinco de Mayo. This is the Gabriel Oak. And this one is the Alnwick. The feeling that you're gonna have is going to be totally encompassed in roses. That's my goal. And then the wash bins are going to have some tall flowers, hopefully bringing a wall on this side so that people feel like they are enclosed in the flowers. So that's my goal. I think I might need one more wash bin, but for today, I think I'm gonna set them up and then we're gonna plant them up. So let me show you the plants that I have. All right, so for my centerpiece in those wash bins, I thought I would use this amazing salvia. Salvia is low water requiring. They love the heat. They're gonna do great in our area. They're perennials here. And this one is called, it's a proven winner's plant called Plan the Blues. Plan the Blues can get 24 to 48 inches, so two feet to four feet tall. So either way, wherever it falls in there, I'm gonna have a nice tall plant to give that idea that I'm talking about of trying to bring, basically make a little room out of the patio with plants. The other reason why I chose playing the blue salvia is because of its purpley blue color. Oftentimes with roses, you pair purple or blue plants because roses are the pink, yellow, orangey, white, red situation. And so purple looks beautiful as a contrast plant. All right, so I have four of these for the wash bins. 
And then after that, I'm not exactly sure. I know that I want a spilling plant like a potato vine and then some more flowers. So I'm hoping that we're gonna run into either some calabrocoa or some supertunias that will work perfectly in this situation. So let's go shopping. Okay, now we're at Lowe's. This is what I wanna see. Okay, this is the sweet potato vine, $6.98. This is going to grow gigantic. Let's get four of them. What else can we buy here? I'm considering this lantana, just generic lantana. Let's see how big it gets. 12 to 24 inches, yeah. I just don't really love this yellow because it's more orange. Here's some proven winner's plants. Ooh, it's just calabrocoa. A little bit disappointed. I think I'm gonna try this. It's gonna be crazy. Crazy, awesome, or just crazy. So we headed home to set up the patio. I had four wash bins that I had ordered from Pottery Barn and I needed to just figure out where I was gonna put those guys and make sure that they were in the right spot as well as all the roses and terracotta pots so that I could plant and then set up drip. Once everything was placed where I thought I wanted it, I went around and put the plants into the wash bins to give myself some time and space to think about if I liked it or not. After a couple days of actually using the patio, I decided this is exactly where I want things to be. Okay, it's been a couple of days since I set up the wash bins and I put flowers in and I'm getting my feel for the whole situation. I think I've landed with where I want it to be and which flowers inside the bins. So you could see I've placed four wash bins around and initially I was, this is how I had imagined it, but I just felt like it was quite concentrated and so therefore too much flashy stainless steel perhaps. Um, but then once I put the flowers inside, I thought, no, actually this is exactly what I want. The flowers are so striking uh, that I think it's gonna detour from the flashiness of the stainless steel. And eventually these plants are going to be going over the side of these stainless steel um, bins. And then also it's gonna be high impact and that's definitely what I'm going for. So I decided this is the way to go and then I'm gonna get one more and I'm gonna put it right here. So this will hopefully be the feeling of the wall. So anyways, today what I need to do is plant them. So as I showed you, the wash bins are for drinks, drinks containers, so they need some drain holes. I'm actually gonna put two holes in the bottom of each one. One, so that I can run the drip up through the bottom of the drain hole and then you won't see it as much. It won't be like hanging over the edge. And then the other one for actual water drainage. So let's go ahead and get, get that going. Water is against the wall over there and we have a drip tube running under the deck and along the bottom of this retaining wall and then which waters that bed and then all the pots on this patio and all the pots on that deck. So let me just show it to you really quick. So you can see here's the three quarter drip or maybe it's half inch, half inch drip which we've um, like large stapled underneath here. And so this is where the water's coming from. So I'm gonna insert more drip tubes, which are then going to run from there up under here, underneath the wash bin, and then through here. So let's just do that really quick. Actually, I'll start this way so you can see it easier. It's coming out of here. And then we're gonna hook it in to this. So what you need for this is a little poker thing. I buy these at Home Depot for some cents. It doesn't even cost a dollar, I don't think. And then two barb, uh, quarter inch barbs, 
connectors. So I have two of them. So first I'm gonna make a hole in here. Then I'm going to attach the tubing to one end of the barb. There's the hole that I just made right there. Push with all your might. And it's in. I'm just gonna cut it off right here. And then what we're gonna do is once we've planted it, I use this quarter inch emitter tubing with every six inch emitters. And I circle it around in here like a pinwheel to make sure everything gets watered nicely. All right, so let me do the rest of them. the next morning. It's about 7.45 in the morning. I'm trying to plant these. We're at planting time before the 90 degrees Fahrenheit days begins in a couple hours and my phone overheats, which happened yesterday. So anyways, it's time to plant. Yes. So that means that we get to put these beautiful things inside of these buckets. So we have first a purple princess begonia. This is a begonia hybrid. It gets up to three feet high and three feet wide. Will that happen this year in the container? I highly doubt it, but I've never used these plants before, and so we'll see. I also found another plant at Lowe's, which is a green potato vine. Potato vines are awesome. They love heat, they love sun. They get eight to 12 inches high and three to four feet long. So it will totally trail down to the ground by the end of the season, which will be such a striking contrast to the hot pink. And then the last one I have is the Play in the Blue Salvia, which is a proven winner's plant. And my last plant that I wanna add is a Euphorbia Hybrid. These are beautiful. This is a miniature one. It gets about 18 inches tall and wide. I just love the way the white little flowers sparkle. And I think it'll be a nice addition in here behind the um, sweet potato vine. That said, I only found two, so I need to order two more. In the meantime, I think I'm gonna put one on this, in this corner um pot and then one in the other corner pot and leave the two middles for later let's get started with our plants put some fertilizer in i keep my fertilizer in these tubs these folgers tubs because of the handle it's so easy to use put this one at the front so the thing with bougainvilleas, I understand, is that they don't want to be disturbed. So sometimes people suggest cutting the bottom of the bucket and planting them in the bucket. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna hope for the best. Treat them like little babies. Last year I planted a bougainvillea standard and it was, it kind of went into shock, but it recovered after like a few weeks. All right, so the reason why these plants are gonna be perfect together is because they all love really hot, hot, hot situations. They can handle hot sun. So this is like a Mediterranean plant. It loves heat. This is a salvia, loves heat. Euphorbia, loves heat. Sweet potato vine, loves heat. All of them require very little water except for the sweet potato vine, which does require more water. 
So that will be an interesting combination. Either the sweet potato vine will soak up all the excess water from the watering system and then the other plants will be fine or it won't have enough water, in which case um, we'll have to see how that does and then either replace it or not. So this is gonna be a little bit of an experiment as always with me. The last piece that we need to do is set up the, the water. So let's do that and then I'll show you how I do all of them. Now I need to cut it off just as close to the soil as I can get. And then I'm going to take again another barb, quarter inch barb, pointing in towards the water source. I'm going to take the quarter inch emitter with six inch emitters. So an emitter every six inches and it emits half gallon per hour. What does that actually mean? Just make sure that there is some water coming out by each plant. So what I do is I put it in there and then I wrap it around like a pinwheel. So I'm just gonna go through here. And then it's gonna end somewhere in the middle. So I'm gonna cut it off right here. These are called goof plugs. And so they, uh, they make it so that it plugs up the line. So we put one in the end of this and now no water can come out. Now we can just lay this however we want in here, stake it in. I'm gonna make sure there's one right next to the potato vine and I'm gonna put one through the middle of this. And then you just need to get irrigation stakes. You can get small ones that are four quarter inch, or you could just use the regular ones, which are cheaper actually. And you just stake it in there, however you want it to be. I'm gonna add the compost now over the top of the tubing. So it just kind of covers it. And now we're good to go. All right, I think it's looking good. So we have two plants going kind of out each direction. Remember this gets 18 inches, so it's gonna fill this whole side. And this one is hopefully gonna fill this whole side. They're gonna both spill over the edge. We have the euphorbia, which is doing a lot right now. I don't know if it's actually gonna get swallowed up by the rest of the plants, but for now it's gonna be great for the next month or so. And then we have our salvia, which is gonna fill in the whole back. All right, and we have our water set up, so we're good to go. I'm gonna water these in really well right like after I plant them because it's gonna be 90 degrees today. And then the drip will start coming on in its regular fashion starting tomorrow or whenever it starts. So this is the Strawberry Hill Climber. I can smell it right here. It is so beautiful. I need to tie these up. But this is going to be the background of these beautiful pods. I think it's going to work. So why don't I finish uh, these up and then I'll show you how it looks in the end. I think everything's the way that I want it to be. I want to be able to walk behind all of these chairs 
And we can do that now without tripping over the bed in the ground. I think we're gonna have some beautiful things come out of these pots. I'm super excited about the dynamic hot pink and the lime green. I had that last year, but with super tunias. So I think that the wash bins turned out great. As you can see, I left one with the bottle opener forward and the rest of them I turned around so you won't really notice that. But I mean, eventually this will be covered by plants, but maybe it will be convenient to have a bottle opener out here. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Also along here, I think we could probably use a few more small terracottas to fill in this blank space probably not roses, probably something else. This is a pot from last year that's totally coming back. I think this is a rutabecchia. We have some uh, violas in here. We have a surprise plant. I'm not sure what it is, and it looks like some self-seeding has occurred. I'm letting this one do its own thing. I've underplanted this rose, which is the Cinco de Mayo, with a dark purple verbena. And over here we have our two roses, the Alnwick and the Gabriel Oak underplanted. The Gabriel Oak, oh yeah, both of them have the Alcamilla and as well as the uh, gray Dichondra Silver Falls. So that will be fun to see how that works out. And I have some hot pink super tunis from last year that came back under the lemon tree. So I think that kind of just brings it together in terms of that feeling of a little room where we can hang out out here in our little room. And remember, I'm getting the final Pottery Barn wash tub and all planted up, same as these other ones on that side. And then the hot pink over there. I, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I'm excited to share this with you. You can find me on Instagram during the week as well as Facebook. Um, and I try and post videos every Tuesday and sometimes a few bonus. All right, see you in the next one. Thanks for joining me, bye.